Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy and today I would like to show you how you can improve visuals of your game, how to make it a bit more original, how to add some stylization, etc, etc. And all that for free, obviously, because we all love free stuff, let's be real here. And for that we will use Asset Pack on Unreal Engine Marketplace, it's called Post Process Shader Pack version 1.2 and of course you will have link in the description so you can download it from there. And if we just quickly look at that, it's a pack of shaders that will let you change visuals of your game. So let's add it to your project and I will show you how you can customize it and work with that. All right, after importing it, it will create new folder, TS post process. So let's open that and you can find all of these post process materials right here. But this is probably kind of messy, especially if you haven't ever worked with that. So let's start in maps and we will look into post process volumes. That's a map where you can see overview of all these effects. And here you can see that we have all these volumes with added different types of post process. So let's try to go into that. And you will see just how much it changed the world, right? This one looks like some pretty cool blueprint. Let me just quickly go through them and then I will show you how to edit them. This is a bit of a less blueprinty. That's kind of a paper stuff, etc, etc, etc. Okay, it's kind of stupid going through all of them, but you can go through them and see how it is changing. This looks pretty good for some comics stylized stuff. If you added colors, maybe something like that, you can of course combine them. So let's find some simple one that will be easy to edit. And I would say that the first one we tried should be pretty cool. Yeah, let's do this one. So, of course, it's a post-process volume, which means that it works only if your camera is inside it. But what you can do is to scroll down. Well, let's not scroll down. Let's just write it here in search bar and find here unbound. If you click on that, it will work on your whole level. And now we can edit it as we need without being in there. So what you primarily have to look at is rendering features right here. And in here you can find that new material. So if you set its visibility, which is, this is basically opacity. So if you set it to zero, you won't see it at, uh, at all. It's actually pretty important to work with this because right here you can adjust how much you want it to be visible. It depends what kind of material you're using. If you are using something like outlines, it can be pretty handy. You can edit it how, how strong you want them. But that's not how you would usually edit it. Let's try to find that material by clicking on this little icon and it will get us in here and all these materials are created as material instances which means that you can edit them in a real time so you can of course edit it right here and da -da -da, change everything as you want blah 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 but let's just put it on the side here and edit it while looking at our game uh, let's say that i want to adhere lines so let's enable that and i want to change its color lines are already here but i want to change them i want to have them red and look at that, all the lines are now reddish. That's very interesting. All right, let's see if we can somehow edit its opacity. And we have here note for that, so let's say that I, want, I don't want him to be so strong, so let's decrease that. And you can work with that as much as you want. And now let's edit that paper a little bit. Let's say that I want, don't want that paper to be blue, I want it to be pink because, Jesus, it looks terrible, but let's have it pink. It's a stylized and some people are into that, so maybe you can get some people to play your game if it won't be for other reason. At least they are weird. <laughs> All right, let's change line color to something greenish. We will go completely bizarre stuff. And you can also, of course, change the material. If you have your own material for, uh, for this page, so you can change it. Let's see if this works fine. Yeah, let's add here this thing and change its scale so it's much smaller and do here something like that. It's almost as it was before, but hey, who cares? All right, that looks quite terrible because it's too strong. So let's click back and put it away. All right, let's disable that unbound here so we can use other, other ones and I will show you how we can edit another one. So unbound, disabled, and let's look at something a bit more complex. I think that we can work with that. It could be interesting. So let's again find here to do rendering post process and you can have here this Wait, you have to select it first of all, <laughs> of course. So let's find it and you can see it's this material. It's ink. It's like an ink paper, but it's sci-fi. So here you can play with it a bit more. Let's say that I want it to be stylized into green color and you can of course edit it dynamically. For example, let's add here blueprint that will control this post process uh, sci-fi, whatever it is. And you can change that color or its opacity dynamically in the game, which could be very, very interesting. Right here you can work with paper opacity. You can set paper opacity to something pretty uh, low. It will look like you have a hut or screen for the game. 
So you can, for, so you can, for example, activate it only if you have a sci-fi game where your player char your character or player puts a helmet on or something like that. Could be very interesting. All right, let's look at this comic stuff. Usually, comic stuff are pretty weird and hard to edit. So you can see that right here we have. Uh, let me scroll it up. Uh, right here, you can see that we have at least three different uh, arrays. If you want to add another one, let's just click on the spots on that plus. You can be selecting them and deselecting them by changing it here and just figuring out what each of them does. So this, that first one seems to desaturate everything. So let's open that and let's say that I don't want to desaturate it that much, just a little bit. So we got some nice stylization. Let me see. Let's try 0 0.6. Uh, maybe that's a bit too much. 0.2. 0 0.1 maybe we are getting somewhere and we can edit and uh, i can adjust number of colors something like that and bias is what bias will be basically how strong these transitions are but i believe that in this case if we go into minus we should get a stronger color so let's try it to minus 0 0.5 and we should get something like that and it's starting to look pretty good i would say that you can do some really interesting stuff with this cool thing about this shader is that it uses original colors so it will look different based on what is in your game usually toon shaders use at least uh, use three or four different colors that they push on everything let me see what I can do with this crossing and mainly here you can adjust, adjust that hatch size of course or working with this threshold these are always a bit of a <laughs> bit of a experiments because you need to kind of figure out what works for your game what you like and what you don't like so let me actually pull it completely off and we got almost complete stylization I like I kind of like that I think that we can work with that quite well and with the last one what let's see what this one does and this will add outline on that. So let's see if we can increase that outline. I want to have really strong lines. And right here, you can work with angles, blah, 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 blah. We have the line color and distance fall off. But what I want is to increase opacity. And what's more important, I want to increase line width. Uh, let's set it to three. So it will have like a really strong lines. All right, that's way too much. I hate it. <laughs> let's do 1.5. And again, decrease that opacity. It was a, they, they knew what they were doing when they set that opacity to something strong, uh, something lower. Uh, I, would say, I think that this looks pretty cool. Now we have basic. Now you can see that in few minutes I have ed edited the shader and it looks completely different, and we have sort of a original look for the game. All right, I will show you one more thing, and that's uh, basically how I would create this post-process volume from the scratch. But before that, if you are interested in stuff that I do in Unreal Engine, mostly in VR, you can follow my Instagram somewhere here, and you can see stuff there. Yeah. So let me go back to my map. I believe it was third-person map. Let's open that thing, and. Add it somewhere here. We already have here post process volume, but let's let's delete that and add here a new one so you can create it completely from scratch. So let's add here post process volume volume and set it to unbound. So it covers everything. And what you want to do now is of course to find our rendering features right here. Now let's look into our TS post process and post processes and we have our instances right here, which is the folder that we are using before. And let's say that I want to start with some nice outline on stuff. So I will use, I believe it was pixelized cross stitch. Let's try to add it here. Oh, and of course you have to this choose set to asset reference, my bad. And add it here. And that's definitely not what I wanted. But if you were making, making some sensor game or just something, or just something retro pixel, you can probably find a use for that. Let's add that sci-fi thing. Let's go into something scientific. And to do, open that and edit it a little bit. That's, it's, it could be actually interesting what will happen if we set it to black because black is not, black is not supposed to emit any, anything. Yeah, I thought so. It will just look like a bit of a cell shading. So let's put here something more shiny. Let's do bluish color. And I don't want any of this. Let's set paper opacity to zero. I don't want it there. And that's about it. All right, cool. And now I want to do something with all these colors. It's too bright, way too bright. Let's try to add here some cell shading. So we have here two moon shader. Let's try instance. So again, plus add here another one. Let me scroll down so I make sure that you see it. And put it in here. Again, asset reference, put it in here. 
and that's weird I don't want I don't like that but we can probably work with that of course you can work on the opacity and you will get some semi good result a result uh, but let's just try to adjust it here so first of all I don't want to have that much of a difference between shaded and flat so let's decrease that now let's look at our base brightness and put it down to something like that shading black point I believe that that's the thing that will help us most because that's basically the strict transition between shadow and light shadow minimum brightness let's let's put it really high and you can see it actually looking pretty good at our mannequin okay I would say that, that doesn't look too bad well it looks terrible but it does what we want from it because it makes the game original all right and I also want to add here some more lines and some cross hatching so I will use that it, that I will use this ppm ta ink paper black line let's put it here and if we find that I already had it but let's let's ignore my ignorance this time around and edit it a little bit you can see these lines on here if I disable that they disappeared yeah that's actually that's actually looking pretty good why am I showing this to you I should use it for my own games well, I usually do VR games right now, so post-process is not really stuff that I can afford. You know what, let's maybe decrease the sci-fi lines, That's, they are way too strong. So, line opacity, 0 0.15. And now we click on play. It's way too dark, but that's because you need to also work with uh, brightness. The problem with uh, these post-process volumes is that it often messes up your your maximum and minimum brightness. So if you look in, in lenses, you can find here the exposure and adjust your minimum and maximum brightness. So let's, let's adjust our maximum brightness. I think that if we set it to about 0 0.5, it should give us some interesting result. Let's see. Ah, you can still see the transition a bit, but it looks much better. So, hey, that's pretty original look, actually. As I said, I kind of like that. <laughs> so I would say that we got some pretty original and pretty cool looking looks. So that's about it. I hope that you learned something. I've got one more tip for you. If you are interested in learning more about this, Unreal Engine has pretty interesting class where you can learn how to make all this from scratch. It won't teach you how to do all this, but it will uh, get you on the good start. So I will leave you a link in the description if you are interested in that. And that's about it from me. Huge thank you to everyone on Patreon. You really helped me out a lot. And that's about it. Sarfancy out.